from uh, Ismail, Dr. Ismail. So just a brief introduction of Dr. Ismail. So Dr. Ismail has over 15 years of working experience at the electricity utility company in Mauritius. Uh, he's also part of a Metacoach family and is certified trainer in the personal development field where he specializes in assisting people in becoming a better version of themselves and as well to develop their leadership skills. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Smile, who will today be talking to us about leadership mindset to navigate in a VUCA environment. So over to you, Dr. Smile. Thank you, thank you, MC. Thank you to PMI Mauritius for giving me this opportunity. Let me start by sharing my presentation. Okay, hopefully you can see the screen right now. Let me just put that on presentation mode. So I'll be listening to a few uh, maybe uh, presentations since yesterday. So maybe you have you're having a, a daunting, intimidating view of maybe perception of VUCA. So my role today is to give you the other side of the coin. Can we, maybe if you're with me, can we see opportunities in the VUCA environment, VUCA world, whatever? Can we move from this daunting picture that has been painted for us? Can we use that to our advantage? So this is my role today. And hopefully I'm going to give you a few tools and maybe some ingredients as well as a recipe for success in the VUCA world. So let's get started. So the introduction about me has been done. So you can reach me on my email number or my website. So that's okay. So hope you're ready for that because as we know, as you know, have you, you have just heard from Rajiv that you have the dark web. We are seeing you. We are seeing that you are participating, you are listening to us. So let's get, let's participate in this presentation. Have you maybe, uh, notebook ready because we are going to share some heavy stuff around here. So let's get to the uh, maybe the history of, of VUCA. You have heard about the Cold War, it was invented and so on. I have a, a small piece of history which I wanted to share, not about how VUCA came about, more importantly, what were, what were done at that point in time to make up for VUCA, to fight VUCA. Okay, to be able to get to the next level against VUCA. So we are, let's go back in time to early 2000. So we were having what we call the Al-Qaeda forces in Iraq fighting against the US Army, special military. Okay, so top notch of equipment, military service and everything, like full, fully funded and so on against maybe some Al-Qaeda forces. Okay, maybe just having a, a few guns here and there. So, but however, what happened at that point in time? Al Qaeda created battle conditions which even the US Army, the elite team, okay, struggled because they were structured. So, they means the US Army was structured. Usually, it's a good way. Okay, you obey specific protocols and so on. They were structured in a way that was not fast enough. So while being structured, they were not, they had not have this ability to move forward, to take quick decision, no change adaptive enough. So they could not adapt to any change. They had maybe a plan in place and they had to stick to this plan. It was not easy for them to, to change, to bring about changes, to succeed in this environment, which they describe, the US Army described as being volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. Most likely you would have heard the con, the this new term, not so new term, since yesterday we have been speaking about it, which is VUCA. So yesterday, Anil Singh told us that he has another definition of VUCA as compared to what we have here today. He talked about value, understanding, control, and accept. By the time I'm going to finish today, I'm going to give you how we can, we have maybe a new definition of VUCA to help us have a leadership mindset to navigate in this environment. So if you are still with me, let's see about what was the mindset change now. Okay, so we have seen the fight between the Al-Qaeda and the US Army, but what came about so that the US Army could go beyond this VUCA environment. So fortunately, the US Joint Special Operations Task Force in Iraq had the presence of mind. So here we just need to know that presence of mind is being, being aware, the wisdom, and most important is a humility. So it's important to be humble, to say, okay, maybe we are doing it the wrong way. We need to change. Maybe we need to learn. We need to have this humility. It's not that we know everything. 
to realize that they were operating with the wrong paradigm. So it can be we are operating the right and we need to question this paradigm. And that is what needed to change. So there is need to change. We cannot continue with the same strategy and say it is failing. We need to change. They set conventions aside, the protocols, the usual way of doing things, and completely restructure themselves to better deal with the reality of Al-Qaeda VUCA tactics. I don't know if this story is 100% true, but the, the, the lessons that we have from this story are very fruitful. This is what we are going to work on today. Let's see, do we have, let's create this awareness Okay, about the VUCA, what is what you're going to see, what does VUCA and so on means. And then let's, let, let's be humble. Let's say, okay, let's see, maybe we are doing it wrong. And what is a new paradigm that we need to adopt to be able to bring about change and make VUCA our friend? We are going to tame VUCA if you are still with me. So let's start a quick introduction about the different terms. Okay, the acronym vol volatility, the V of VUCA is liable to change rapidly. The definition of volatility in this uh, scenario is liable to change rapidly. So maybe you have seen since the beginning of the year, maybe since last year as well, exchange rate going up, but not down till now. Prices, you go to the market, supermarket this week, you go next week, there is maybe at least one or two, maybe 10 items which are having price changes and it's already up. Okay, for our disadvantage, but in VUCA, it may be going up or down. So it's about this liability to change rapidly. It can be afraid to have seen the, 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 the disruption that we are having in our procurement supply chain with freight, so the price of, of freight and so on. It is affecting our supply chain as well. Okay, but yesterday, if you listen to, to what Professor Kiran was saying, okay, he said that is it still a pandemic? Yeah, we are still navigating in a pandemic. But is COVID-19 still a force majeure? Or is it become what we call the new normal? But that was, was a very interesting question, which we need to look into. Is it like we need to, this is a new normal, a new environment that we need to be navigating in. We need to be ready to be able to move forward in such an environment. It's no longer like a surprise. It's took it by surprise. Sure, but now we need to navigate this is a new world order. Next is uncertainty. So what is uncertainty? It's not able to accurately know, okay? So it's well, not accurately known or can be predicted, okay? We are used, I am used to most likely to, uh, to, to predict, look for information and so on, try to find some trend. And then you can use this information, this knowledge available, historical information to be able to decide on future maybe events and so on. But ability to anticipate change is becoming tougher, much more difficult as historical information and past experience. This is what we have been using all our life, experience, historical information to help us decide, forecast what can be expected. Nowadays with this VUCA environment, we can't. It is uncertainty which is taking over. Now let's talk a bit about complexity. Let's introduce a Stacy matrix. Forget about the, all the terms in there, but let's see, we have agreement against uncertainty. We have four quadrants, okay, arranged differently. We are going to move diagonally. So let's start with simple, first one. It's about if you need to do decision making. So in a, in a specific environment, you need to do decision making. So we start with simple. So the structure is clear. A discipline is required, so we know exactly. So it can be in terms of maybe one plus one, no big deal, it's two, basically, unless you are going to say, okay, we have different ways, of everything. but anyway, simple mathematics is going to be one plus one is equal to no, uh, no, no big deal about that. So we are going, going to use standards, okay, to help us, like, uh, help us with our decision making. Next one, moving di diagonally, okay, it's complicated. Predictable upfront, it is slightly more than simple, simple, but then it is a complicated world, quadrant, but it can be predicted, okay? Determine the outcome can be determined. So decision-making can be like, do you prefer orange or apple? Is it blue or black? So there is a decision-making to be made, but you can, based on what, on your liking, your experience and so on, you can do the decision-making. Slightly more difficult than one plus one, but not too like uh, still manageable for for uh, leaders around then we have the complex one 
where we, we introduce the term complexity of VUCA. So it's about predictions or inaccurate undeterministic outcome, even though we are using past experience, historical information, we can't predict accurate. This is what we call a complex environment. Okay, so this is where we are currently, level three. Now, we have one which is on top, the chaotic one, where chaos is going to be around. There's no pattern recognizable. Planning is impossible. Okay, complex can be in terms of, okay, we are opening our borders today. Okay, there are some uncertainties, but as they have been mentioned, the, it is like a, a decision which has been taken after they have assessed the situation. So it's complex, but it's not chaotic as such. So we are blessed in some way. If we are operating in a VUCA environment, we are still in the complex, we are not in a chaotic. So that's positive for us, okay? We are not on the extreme side of this Stacey matrix. We are on the complex. What we are going to introduce later on, how do we go from complex? We need to pull down this complexity towards complicated, make it complicated, move from complexity and make it complicated because we love complicated things, okay? Because it is, they are simpler to manage, okay? And let's move to this one, the last one, which is ambiguity. So what is ambiguity? Is it a duck or a rabbit? Up to you to decide, I will leave it to you, okay, to decide, maybe you have it overnight, and maybe by tomorrow, you can give me an answer, try to avoid. So ambiguity is expression, direction, action, or intention that can be understood in two or more ways. You can have a look at it, it is a rabbit, you can have a look at this part, it is maybe a duck, so what is it all about, okay? So this is what ambiguity means that the direction what should take is not clear, okay? It is not a new, it is actually a new territory that we are unfamiliar with uh, for us, and we are most likely operating in our, out of our, our comfort zone, okay? So why now are we experiencing these VUCA waves, let's call that the VUCA waves, more regularly? Maybe it happened, it was in, introduced VUCA, the terms date back to 20, the, 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 uh, the year two, two, 2000s, isn't it? And then why are we, like living it more frequently nowadays. So it is because we know change is the only constant. Change is the only constant. We know about this term, isn't the statement. However, the rate of change is increasing. Let's consider the Toffler curve, okay? Rate of change against time. We have it, okay, since the 1980s, uh, the 90s and uh, the 80s and so on. So the first agriculture, the first way, which is the agricultural age, we have the industrial age, the information age. Nowadays, we are maybe lost, the last part of the information age. We, the, the, the rate of change, change is still quite this constant. Yeah, we are experiencing change every day, but the rate of change has gone up drastically, okay? And I think you will, you will agree with me on this Thought as lead this. So we are every day, uh, like we have what we call an information overload syndrome. We have so much of information. We are flooded with information. The rapid growth of electronic communication, like social media and so on, is creating like a, what we what call the information overload syndrome. Let, let, let's, let's, let's have a quick maybe statistics here. The New York Times, maybe of today or yesterday, one day, contains as much distinct information every day as the average 17th century person encountered in his own lifetime. So the, let's take the, the 17th century, one person living in this century. So the amount of information he had over his lifetime is now contained, the same amount into the bulk of information is contained in one issue of the New York Times, just to show you the amount of information that we have nowadays. It is said, it is, it has been verified that 90% of all data on, in this world, in our world where we're living today, has been generated over the last two years. 90% is the last two years only. We, we have, we are creating, we created like 2.5 quintillion, quintillion data bytes daily in 2020. So what is quintillion? For those who don't know, like me, there are 18 zeros in quintillion. So you can start counting, maybe uh, fingers won't be enough. Okay, but now this avalanche of data continuously changing drastically or like noise, blurring the decision-making ability of leaders. But what should leaders do in this maybe situation? 
Your leadership voice should be louder than the noise. This is from John C. Maxwell. Your leadership voice should be louder. You need to grow bigger. You need to grow larger. You need to become better than the noise which is being emitted by this environment that we are living in, what we call the new normal. Okay, so how? Leaders are not created in crisis situation. Every day is like crisis situation. We have deadline, things are changing, and so we have seen the environment, isn't it? But leaders are not created. It's not that, okay, I'm going to become a leader to navigate in this book. Well, no, leaders are not created in a crisis situation. They are only revealed. You are already a leader. You are going to be revealed. But let, 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 let's see this last part. You are going to be revealed, isn't it? However, as a leader, okay, if you feel you are a leader, you would be thriving in such situation. You would be loving such situation, crisis situation, because leaders defy the status quo. They don't like to live in status quo, isn't it? Let, let, let's take our Mauritian friends who are around, maybe others who are from, from abroad as well. Spa, if you're going to eat a dalpuri, okay, that's what we have, the, the, the common stack that we have on our streets here, you're going to add the chili, isn't it? It's about the spice. You know that it's going to maybe hurt your stomach and so on afterward, but you like the spicy. This is what leaders like. They like to, it's a difficult situation. It's going to be like a bit of crisis for your digestive system, but you like it. When you're going to eat fruit pickles, okay, you will add a few of those, uh, uh, pick, uh, what we call spicy things on that as well. Okay. In football, you like, you like when your team is winning one, two goals by, by, uh, maybe, uh, two goals to nil, isn't it? You like it. But what do you like more? What do you experience better? When you have what you call the remontada, your team has been losing 3 nil at mid, uh, during the mid of the match. Okay. After half time, your team scores three goals. And then in the last minute injury time, they score the fourth goal and you win the match. You like it. This is what leaders like. They love, they thrive in such situations. This is what we are going to do today. We are going to change. We are going to introduce a mindset that we leaders are going to like. Okay, to defy the status quo. We are going to thrive in this environment. Let's hear what the CEO of Microsoft has to tell us. The role of leadership today is to bring, to bring clarity in uncertain times. So it's important to bring clarity. The more uncertain things are, the more leadership is required. So the more it is this in this book environment and so on, this is what will the more your leadership abilities are going to grow. There is no job description for what you are facing today. There's no rules. Okay, there are no rules. Today, leaders need to thrive in, in the face of this uncertainty. So this is what we are made for. Leaders are made for such situations. We are not made for the routine works okay, that everyone can do, basically. We are made, okay, we have taken the responsibility as leaders to navigate, to help our team navigate in such situation. A real leader should be thinking, okay, or should be thriving in terms of excitement in a pandemic. It is maybe, uh, maybe he's go it's going to be hot, definitely. It's going to be stressful, surely. It's going to be difficult decision-making, but the leaders ultimately are going to love it. They're going to love this situation. May not most of the results, because they are going to fight to make it to, 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 to ascertain that their team workers and so on, people working on them are going to have the best of the environment to work in. But they like this difficult situation. This is what they all live out for. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what, what is the, the, the uh, idea, the lesson that we need to take from this video? Charles Darwin, I'm not a fan of Charles Darwin, by the way. It's not about, it's not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent. It is the one that is more adaptable. Well, adaptable, if we can look for another word about flexible, to match this video. So you need, you know, be, to be the strongest one around. Good, it's good to be strong, okay? But you need to be adaptable, to be flexible. Remember the, the, the case study about the uh, Al-Qaeda and the US Army, they need to be flexible. You have some protocols, definitely, 
but then you need to be able to know what is the main idea so that you can work your way around to be able to achieve the objective. So key word here for us today is about flexibility. You need to be flexible to enable change, to move towards change, to embrace change. Alvin, okay, writer and futurist said, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who can't read and write, but those who can't learn, unlearn and relearn. In the picture, you can see like a photograph from a helicopter. Okay, it's like dangerous thing. Okay, he can maybe tell it's, it's, it's risky business, isn't it? But if he don't maybe move towards a new technology, what we have that is all that's going to cost him in terms of, of having an aircraft, a helicopter to take him there, and the equipment that he is using to take pictures and so on. Nowadays, we can do that with a drone, isn't it? Much more even. Okay, so in terms of cost, in terms of risk and so on, so we need to learn, we have learned. Okay, the usual way of doing things. You need to unlearn to look what the new technology, the disruptive technology, the world is offering to us that we can relearn. As we are going to, to be like eradicated, we are going to be extinct, extinct from this world. Let's say driving an automatic car. I've always, I want my fan is still a fan of what we call the manual uh, driving in a car. However. I had to have to move to automatic driving. So I had to unlearn. You don't know what to do with your uh, left foot, isn't it? Okay, when you have been driving uh, maybe for the last 10, 15 years, uh, the, the manual one, you love it. Okay, and then you need to shift to automatic. It takes some time to, to learn. Using the parking assist, I have it in my car. I've not used it yet. I'm not too maybe trustworthy on the, on the electronics and so on, but it is available. We need to learn it ultimately. I need as I'm going to become what we call an illiterate of this century. Banking now. What people have been doing in the past, going to the maybe my grandmother, she would go, she won't trust the ATM, she would go to the teller, physical teller in the bank. Maybe I would go to the ATM machine. What are the young doing today? They are going to use juice. I think MCB is one of our sponsors, I can mention that. So you're going to use juice, isn't it? So we need to move, we need to learn, and learn, relearn. And what's coming after juice? We don't know. Much more interesting, maybe. Okay. So this is what we say. We need to learn and learn and relearn. These are key words that we need to. These are, I'm just giving you the ingredients right now, the mindset that you need to adapt. And then ultimately, we're going to, to have the recipe later on. Next is embrace reverse mentoring. We, as maybe experienced personnel, experienced leaders, we say, okay, it's our role to mentor the youngsters. True enough. This is our role. Okay, we need to give back to the young generation, give back to society. But we need to remember the, the term that the verb or the, 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 the word that we, we heard earlier on with Al Qaeda and so on is about humility. We need to be humble enough. Okay, we can't know everything. And with what we, we learned yesterday about BIM, okay, and uh, we heard about IoT, big data, cryptocurrency, I'll just mention a bit. So, bitcoins and so on. So, what are all these around? Do I. Can, can I understand all these things? So where would I know, understand? These are the young generation they are going to give you. So remember, reverse mentoring is in a workplace. It's an initiative of the senior executive. It is the initiative of the senior executive or the experienced one to ask the younger generation to mentor them on these simple things because it has changed. Even social media and so on, you need to know how to use it for your advantage. Okay, look for opportunities in these uh, new things, disruptive technologies and so on. So we need to be humble enough to say, okay, I need most likely to be mentored by the young, so the generation that they're going to hit the market in a couple of years now. Okay. Next is to move the hierarchy of the organizer. Here again, we go back to the Al-Qaeda story. What happened? Okay, so we saw that uh, uh, they had to move. It was too structured, the protocols and so on. So let's move. Let's change this hierarchy to self-organization. So delegate decision making down to the organization where information is fresh and more salient. They are the one on ground. They are seeing the enemy. So they need to take the decision. Implement decentralized and shorter decision loop. No need. Okay, I have an enemy in front of me. Do I need to kill him or do I need to maybe arrest him? And then they are going to ask his superior, superior is going to ask Washington, Washington is going to ask the president, and then the redecision is going to come back. But till now, this guy has was already shot. Okay, so quicker decision making is so important. Encourage innovative thinking and idea diversity. 
okay to uncover novel solution the solutions most of the solutions nowadays are found with the person on the shop floor those dealing with our customers okay this requires input from all functions and level of organization okay we need to move fast and 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 maybe now how possible how can we let's say okay let's let's how can we leave the decision making to maybe people lower if we are considering the hierarchy, maybe lower in the hierarchy, will they be able to take a correct decision? What do we need to do to, to, to be able to achieve that? The vision must be clear. What is the mission and the vision of the company? Okay, the vision must be clear. How you achieve that, it may be given some room for maneuver by uh, management to these employees. The vision must be clear. You need to empower your employees. So what is empowering? Democratize information. Information must be available to all people in the com company. Empower employees to make decisions, make communication frictionless and regular. Okay, as you know, co uh, project managers and so on, they need to communicate 90% of the time, isn't it? Okay, this communication should be regularly. How are we feeling right now? Maybe those living in Mauritius, and I don't know about abroad, the amount of information, okay, that is being given to us by government and so on. Not criticizing, but how do you feel? Do you feel that communication should be more, maybe, frank, true information? Okay, so this is what we call make communication frictionless and regular. Speed up interaction. Speed matters more than perfection. What is more important about speed than perfection? Let's have a timeline. Doing nothing, just sitting around, then doing something, and then looking for the perfection. From nothing to doing something, it is measurable. We can know, we can do it. But if we want to say, okay, well, I know I won't I won't do it right now, I'll wait for it to be perfect, then I'm going to try it. So this is an infinite distance. It's just like having a look when you're going to raise the horizon, I'm going to take the dive. But you're never going to touch the horizon. You're never going to reach the uh, horizon. So at times we need to say, okay, we need to take a decision. No need to remember what we have just said, the amount of information that we have nowadays that we need to consume to digest. If we rely on all the information, digesting all that before taking a decision, it's too late. We're going to come to that later on. Okay, we have an avalanche of information, isn't it? With false changes happening and uncertainty at various levels, we have, we have seen the curve, okay? Our skills are rapidly become outdated. As leaders, we need to evolve at the same pace, key pace, by scanning the marketplace for opportunities and adopt the relevant new tools or skills. I'll leave it to you, okay? So you need to be at the forefront of technology. What's Not only to adopt the technology, but at least to understand what's happening, okay? Leaders they invest lots of fun, okay? Some big companies in seeing what's happening on the market. We know about the pastel model, but we can go beyond the pastel model to scan the environment every day, every moment, under our every hour. Okay, so let's see what Peter Dirk was, the, the, the founder of modern management. Okay, his, his label as the founder of modern management. The greatest danger in times of turbulence, crisis, VUCA, is not the turbulence, it's not about the environment, is to act with yesterday's logic. We are taking our experience, which is good. Okay, we are taking the historical information that we have on the internet around us and so on, and we are trying to solve the solution that we are having today. Not necessarily true. It may not work out. So we need to go beyond these, uh, maybe uh, what we call things that we have been maybe thought about. Okay, let's move forward. To thrive in a VUCA environment, leaders must be prepared to disrupt and be disrupted. This is what we, I think, uh, one of our leaders yesterday talked about, it, to leave your comfort zone. Disrupt and be disruptive, accept it. Okay, to be disruptive and be disruptive. This requires flexibility and ability to adapt to new circumstances. And uh, believe me, very few companies are immune to disruption. And, and COVID-19 has proved that, meaning they must innovate to maintain market share. Now, in terms of flexibility, what does that mean, flexibility? It's openness to new experiences and adaptable to new processes. Okay, so in times of uncertainty and change, an ideal leadership trait is the ability to be flexible and adaptable. VUCA leadership not only is like struck in there, we are going to use our common ways and so on, the common way of doing things, but we need to be able to flex, to pivot, and to be agile enough as new information is obtained to help us in our decision making as opportunities. We are going to create opportunities. If there's no door, we need to build the door, isn't it? You know about all these terms, we need to apply that nowadays. 
Now, as a leader, you would like to be a CEO. Who would not like to be a CEO? But we're going to redefine what is meant by the CEO now. Let's have a look. You say it's chief executive officer, isn't it? Now, in VUCA, in, in as a, to have this mindset of, of, of to navigate in this VUCA, let's see, it's going to be chief experimenting officer. You are, you need to have the curiosity of the five year old kid. Okay. You need to be open to trying out new methods or ideas. What understand that failure is part of the process for success. This is another topic in itself. Failure is not like the, the country is the opposite of success. No, far from that. Maybe this is what we have learned in, in, in schools and so on. But failure is part of the process for becoming successful. This is a mindset that we need to adopt. How are you in your business or in, in whatever you're doing? Are you risk tolerant or risk adverse? How, most likely you need to have a balanced approach to risk management. You need to be open to experimentation and comfortable with uncertainty. Okay. And this we're going to see that much later on. So visioning, let me just check my time. Okay. Visioning now, remember to be able to empower your people, you need to create a vision. You need to have a shared vision. Clearly define the core value proportion of the organization. Yes, we have mission and vision, which is on the website, which is on the catalog, the annual report. But then do our people leave this mission and vision? Define how much, how each member of the team fits into the vision for the daily contribution. Help the team understand the bigger picture. While everything changes, the vision is going to remain consistent. This is why we call the vision direction that we are taking for the ultimate destination, the, 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 the route towards this decision may be changing, but our destination remains the same. I'm going to pick up the story from yesterday's session. In 1962, President John Kennedy, okay, he visited the uh, NASA Space Center. He wanted to send, he took the decision, okay, uh, to, to send someone onto the moon, a person, and bringing him back safely. And one year later, he visited the, the NASA Space Center. He found a janitor cleaning around. He introduced himself, I'm President Kennedy. What are you doing? What would the janitor say? Okay, maybe he would say, I'm cleaning around. I'm just cleaning uh, very like, uh, to the best of my abilities. No, he said, I'm helping putting a man on the moon and bring him back safely. He's part of the vision. Even the janitor indirectly contributing to sending someone on the moon. Now we need to distill that, give that to our employees. Okay, our mission, so that when they know exactly in which direction we're working, then they can take the proper decision moving in the correct direction. Now, in terms of decision making, what is our attitude towards decision making? In, in, we should have an inclination for action, what, what we call an ability to make a decision with incomplete. We won't have complete information. It's too difficult, it's going to take too much time. Remember, speed over perfection. Okay, we need to have a bias for action, which is solution oriented. Let's say we have option A and option B. We need to decide whether we are going to go for option A or option B. The analysis that's going to take you, so you have a cost of when you're going to implement A, option B. Now the cost involved in analyzing, getting all the information ready, put that in graphics and so on. What is the cost for, at times, not always the case, okay? It can be that analyzing whether option A or option B is more efficient, is going to cost you much more than maybe A or B, even the opportunity cost of both as well, okay? So at times we need to take decision, bias towards decision-making, action, and so on. Let's see what Tata, Mr. Tata had to say. I don't believe in taking the right decision. I take decision and then make them right. I take the decision and then I look to it. Okay, I see to it that this decision turns out to be right. Okay, is it like a great statement to, to make? So there's a big difference now between a wrong decision and a bad decision. There's a difference between a wrong decision and a bad decision. Let's have a look. What is the distinction? Let's say you like to eat. Uh, maybe a wrong decision is when you, you, you base your decision making on available information. Well, this is what I have available to me today. I'm going to use this information to make a decision. Let's say, uh, this can, when we time, when I'm, when the, the things are going to, we're going to see a clearer picture. Maybe it was what we call a wrong decision at one point, but at the, when I was taking the, I didn't have all the information ready. Example can be, I'm, eat, I'm going to eat dal puri, okay, in, in, in the boat with bazaar. Okay. Okay. And then ultimately I found out that I had a uh, stomach, an upset stomach. So it's a wrong decision, most likely, 
Because at that point, I didn't know that I would have maybe an upset stomach. They will say, people will tell you, yes, you took the wrong decision and so on. But let's see what is a bad decision. Bad decision is it is predictable. You already know that while eating dal puri and drinking aluda in Bazar Puri, okay, you have been hospitalized 35 times before due to the same action. But you still, you go to Bazar Puri and you take a dal puri with a chasachini, and then you have the aluda, you drink, and so on, and definitely you know it's predicted. This is a bad decision as compared to a wrong decision. We didn't know the whole picture at that point. But now you know the picture, you know what all the consequences, and then you take the decision because you like Galpuri. Okay, so this is a bad decision. So we need as leaders to be able to know what is a bad decision and what is a wrong decision. Now, okay, our friend here, Better to act on basis of an imperfect plan than too late on basis of a perfect plan. Why is CR7, Cristiano Ronaldo, the top scorer in different leagues and so, so many uh, maybe records on his name? Because he scores much more goals, isn't it? But why does he score much more goals? Because he takes action. He, not, he doesn't wait for the plan to be perfect. He has an angle, he just shoots. It's not going, it's not like he has much of the, what we call a missed shot as well. If you see the amount of shots that he has missed in his life, Definitely, this is because, as we say, failure is part of success. So no need for you to wait for it to be perfect. Even a correct decision is wrong when it is taken too late. Better a good decision quickly than the best decision too late. So we need to move with our time. We need to take decision quite quickly. Now, these were the ingredients. Okay, I'm just checking my time. Okay, now we're going to see how can we use that as opportunities. Let's, let's see. Uh, let's like if someone is going to throw lemons at you, let's make lemonade. Okay, Albert Einstein said, "In the middle of difficulty lies opportunity." Let's look for this opportunity in this environment. We are going to see what we are going to tame the VUCA. So, when confronted with VUCA, we can either it's up to you to decide. You out there, it's up to you to decide. Either you let the fear of the unknown drive your business strategy. You go with the flow. Remember that even dead fish goes with the flow. Or we decide to tame the VUCA. We tame the environment and hunt for opportunities that lies within these challenges. Which one would you go for? Let's see the recipe now. Instead of uh, volatility of VUCA, we are going to counter volatility with a vision of adaptability. Okay, become an adaptive, become like adaptive in decision making, accept and embrace change, have a compelling and clear vision, communicate clearly and regularly to reduce confusion and to motivate your troops, make room for flexible goals for the team. These are what we have just seen. These were the ingredients. Now I'm putting that, okay, how we adapt that to as for, for to, when we have this volatile environment, we are going to create a vision, clear vision for people to, to be able to follow easily. Next is to meet uncertainty with understanding. Promote a culture of flexibility to deal with uncertain situation. Maybe just in time, if you are using just in time, maybe a procurement, maybe have an inventory in place, isn't it? Build commitment and consensus of approach. Listen to everyone, so important. Listen to the opinion of the team, develop new perspective. Those are the lower side of the organigram. Create a balanced approach to reach all, but say, okay, it's too risky for me and so on. Create this balanced approach. Remember the five-year-old. Okay, experiment a new approach to CEO. Invest in business and competitive intelligence was still get all the information from the industry, from the marketplace to help you in your decision making as well. Simulate and experiment with situation and plan responses. Okay. How is it in terms of your risk? What are your risks? And how tolerant are you in terms of risk? Next is react to complexity with clarity. Remember our Stacy matrix? We were on the third one. Let's bring that to complex now. It was like a complex. Let's bring that to uh, what we call uh, complicated. Okay, let's see. Understand the link between cause and effect. Okay, this if this if we do that, it's because this one is going to happen. So we understand the link. At times it's hidden. Simplify processes and procedures. Encourage development and generation of ideas. Communicate clearly. I think communication is common denominator. All of these. Okay, communicate, communicate, communicate. And develop teams and promote collaboration. You should have a multi-talented team as well who can like you can move around. You can choose maybe lateral movement, horizontal movement as well. Your team is like functional. Even though you're some are working at home, some are working maybe from the office, they can do the job. Okay. Like a, a flexible team. Next is fight ambiguity with agility. 
Okay. Communicate clearly with and with clarity. Communication again. Seek out and uncover alternative viewpoints. Listen to divergent ideas and concepts. Promote flexibility, agility, and so on. Okay. Uh, plan ahead. Build a contingency time. All the things that you need to have to your advantage. And uh, this is what is called job rotation, about the cross training to improve team agility. And again, team consensus foster this environment. Look about to create such a conducive environment for team to become team members. If you abide to all these, you are going to tame the VUCA. Okay, the VUCA is going to come become your friend. Okay, you can play around with that. You can use that for your opportunities. Remember, you have this team VUCA by your side now, and just remember how are you going to like excel in this what we call the VUCA environment. So with this said, this is what I had to do to, to, to give you in terms of the mindset. So I have given you lots of, of maybe keywords for you to work on. So I believe that you have you have noted these down. And if you still need some information, you can ask a few questions, hopefully simple one. And else you can reach me out. I will be so happy to connect network with you later on. And that was it for me. Thank you for this opportunity. I hope I've been on time. And I, I'm going to take up a few of your questions now. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you a lot, Dr. Ismail. That was uh, uh, a quite good session with quite some insights and some uh, uh, really, really nice uh, stories. So, yeah, one, one question from uh, our audience is, uh, what, what is the key skill, let's say the most important skill for a project manager in this uh, evolving world? Okay, so you have a lot, it's a very good question. You have a lot of skills which have been described. I would say, personally, it's about, it's going to be um, the humility to accept it. Okay. Because at times we say, okay, we have been working 30 years in this environment and so on, but let's, let's become humble and say, I still have to learn. Okay, because while you're going to adopt this uh, mentality, okay, we are going to say, okay, let's go for uh, peer mentoring. This is what we call a reverse mentoring and so on. We can, we are going to, to learn new things because the new thing that we are seeing around today will not present five years back and so on. Okay, the new technologies and so on. So for me, it's going to be about uh, this mentality of having, having some humility. Yeah. All right, that's, uh, that's great. And uh, your, your, your last slide was quite interesting with the guy walking with, uh, with, uh, with the lion. So how do you see the fear of change and how do you embrace, how, 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 what's your advice for people in terms of fear of change and fear of really touching that lion? <laughs> Actually, uh, yeah, actually, we need to, to go beyond fear. Okay. I have, I think fear is of, uh, like, uh, we need to, to have a different perspective. What, let's have a look at the bigger picture. What will I achieve after being able to, let, 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 let's put that. If we do NLP, a bit of NLP, let's go into a state where we have gone over the fear. How would I be feeling? Okay. Maybe uh, next, I'm planning next to go to jump. I think a tandem dive from, from the airplane and so on. So how would I be feeling when I've completed this experience? Mm -hmm. So we go into this, how would I feel here, maybe uh, feel, okay, the excitement in me. So then we say, okay, is it like, uh, can I really do that? Then we work on some step. What do I need to do to, to achieve those? So we have the final picture in our mind and we can see, hear, feel different things like it may be kinesthetic as well. How would I be feeling when I've been maybe gone down? Maybe how would I be feeling when touching the lion and so on? So you can see that it's about how put it in a, in a futuristic approach, the state, you have completed that. How would you be feeling? And then you say, okay, can I really do that? Then you, you work. If his excitement is maybe on a 10, it's, it's going to help you go uh, above your fear. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ismail. That was a really, My really pleasure. nice session. And uh, I'm sure our audience thoroughly enjoyed, uh, enjoyed your precious, precious advice. And uh, yeah, thank you. A last word from you. Mm -hmm. For me, it's okay. It was a pleasure having, having you. And, and I've been listening since yesterday. Lots of, of takeaways, lots of valuable gold nuggets that you have been sharing. And, and thank you. Thank you for organizing that. Thank you uh, for, for the opportunity. Thank you for the organizing team. Wonderful job. And, and look forward for the next one as well. Thank you. Thank All you right. so much. Doctor, thank you. We'll uh, move on to our next speaker.